Greetings all. Greetings, greetings, greetings at my morning sky. After rain yesterday. The first rain. Huge downpour. Anyway. I kind of like want to talk to you about something that um, is even more important all to it's more important to the Africans but For diasporans, uh, it's important to you also. Um, there's some questions I want to ask you, especially because coming from the West, You should know them, but I know. <laughs> like 90% of the people in the world don't know these things. And as much as you complain about what's happening around us, when you start answering these questions, you see how little you actually know about what's going on. The first question is like, What is the GDP in whatever state you're living in Africa? And for diasporans, what is the GDP of the country, state that you're coming from when you came to Africa? Next question is, How much is the GDP of diasporans contributing to your state? How much is the diasporans contributing in the form of GDP to your state? What is the money being used for? Because Africans don't ask that question. What are my leaders doing with the money? I don't know if it's fear, or they don't care. I, I, I try to answer that question myself, and, and I ask it to other Africans. They don't know. And I, sometimes I can see this hesitancy and some kind of fear of answering. Uh, for diasporans, how many of you ever had a, a, a conversation or a serious discussion with your African friend or family or whoever adopted you about their tribal beliefs, history, and how they view their country. I don't, anytime you ask Gambian about Gambia, it says, oh, smiling coast, and they start smiling. I have no idea that Smiling Coast is an advertising gimmick developed for tourism. No idea. Ask them how do they feel about the leaders. I mean, no, not, um, how do you think of Mr. Barrow's leadership? Is it good? Do you think it's benefiting you, your country, 
your tribal people, your village people, you know, what you see happening on the, look at the roads, look at the health care, look at the education, look at the other parts of government. When you walk into a government office, as things change or they, they, they're still the, the hand, anytime you go in there to ask a question, first thing happening is somebody holding out their hand. Where's my attire? Uh, go buy me a soda. How do you see things in the country that you live in? The, the state, African state that you live in? What direction do you see the country going in? Is it going to benefit you today? Is it going to benefit a year, you a year from now? Is it going to benefit you five years from now? Is it going to benefit your children a hundred years from now? Because that's how things go. They don't just happen accidentally or planned. You can see that the plan is, is, is all confusing. It's all depending on how much money some European nation or EU itself or America giving. You know, those are the questions you gotta ask. And, and Africans don't answer those questions. How much money does the EU give to, to your state? And what's done being done with it? In the, in the, in the country where you came from, how many political leaders or tribal leaders or Whoever is in charge of your state or village, you know, how many diasporans, how many of you diasporans that say, well, I have spoken to these, the governor of the state, the, the senator from the state, the president came around and spoke to us. How many of you can say that? And what did he say? How did he... Did he engage you and say, look, this is what our, our plan is for the next year. I want you to do this to help us accomplish this task. How many of you have ever done that, can say that? Another question, do you know how the deals that are being made today will affect your life in the future. And deals are always being made. Do you know what the deals are? Like, <clears throat> for you in Gambia, I can ask you a question. What was the deal made for the OIC? What was the deal? You see the new water and electricity. Did you hear about it in the news? What's going on with that? What's the deal being made behind that? And then there's this question. How many of you have ever spoken to any of your friends or family, adoptive family about the slave trade? How many of them know anything about it? What do they know about it? And you can conduct these uh, um, in, 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 I mean, a bit of a word, better word to use it is um, kind of a discussion, you know, friendly discussion. So, you know, where are your family from? In, in the Gambia or Ghana or Nigeria. And if you know a little bit about the area where you're from, you say, oh, I know about that area. And you will have a good conversation with the people. They will talk to you about their history very easily. But how many of you have ever done it? There's several other questions that I can ask. But you see the, the, the direction that I was 
Oh, a little dip there. Anyway, there are questions I, other questions I can ask, but I think you see the direction I'm going. Africans don't know about their own country. And they don't know about you. You don't know about your own country. Because most of you don't know what GDP of the US or England or France or Germany is, even if you're still living there. But these questions are very pertinent to your life, the life that you and your family are going to live in Africa. Because when you come to Africa, your children are going to need education. And even if they go to a private school, the education is still going to be affected by government decisions, by decisions of Gambians, the people who you live around, by Ghanaians, the people who you live around, by Nigerians, the people who you live around. They're all people, whether they're government or private citizens. And their lives are affected by everything that happens in the country. If you are being brought in the discussion about the country as a part of the foundation building process for Africa and the future. Your answer is going to be positive with all of these questions. You're going to say, yeah, I know that, I know this, I know this, I understand this, I like this, I like the way things are going, all that. But if you are being excluded, if nobody's talking to you, and if you are not engaging anybody, the future is not going to be good. It's bleak. going to have some serious problems going forward because things are changing rapidly. I mean, the, the, the state is like a, 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 instead of a chain, it's like a rubber band and that rubber band has been stretched and at the point where it's about to bro break or inflated like a balloon just before it burst. You can't imagine how the economy of the U.S. states affects Africa. Right now, you can see the Naira and the Ghanaian I forgot the name of it. But the Delassi, Colombia, how that is being affected by the dollar. And the funny thing is, the dollar is not trading at its actual value, its intrinsic value. Because every three months or so, another trillion dollars added to it. The deficit in the United States, and they have no way of recovering. There is no way the U.S. dollar won. In <laughs> one day, it's just going to sink. The whole world economy is inflate, inflated right now. I mean, the European is just printing money like crazy, hoping that when everything settles down, that they have a plan, and nobody's got a plan to save anything. When it gets cold in Europe, they plan to run into Africa. Hmm. 
and it's getting cold in Europe right now. The European populations are dying off. And the building blocks to rebuild them is in Africa. So guess where they had it? Hmm. In some cases, the events that are going to follow, if you're not prepared for them. Because some of you say, well, I came to Africa with this much money, and you know, I have this many sources of income. Mm. Today, there are only a few, I think it's about three, sources that are not tied directly to the government of either the EU or the United States. And in many countries, there's only one. Even gold and silver, when things disappear when when the dollar hits its <laughs> it's like snowball rolling down the hill when it gets halfway down the hill uh, food is going to be it do you know how to grow food did you bring a skill with you when you came from the west besides those dollars or pounds or euro did you bring a skill that you can use in Africa if you have no skill, you're going to not going to survive. Sorry to break this news for you, so <laughs> for a week now I had this in mind and gotta think about how to bring it out. And this is the only way I can show you because things are moving faster now than before. Like I said to you, every three months now, a trillion dollars being added to the depths of the United States. In two years, the United States is borrowing money. Right now, they, they, they are, but they're not borrowing all of it. They collected less money last than they pay, than people pay in taxes than they spent Israel, Ukraine, the rich people like Google they the government spent how many billions they say to bring chip making back from Taiwan. Did you know how much money they spent? All that money was borrowed. Who's going to pay it back? So, the life that you think you're going to live in Africa is in a precarious position now. And when it... <laughs> uh, when that water tank gets empty and there's just air inside of it, all those dollars that you brought with you are in your bank in America, guess where it's gone? Bank failures are going up now. You're not hearing about them anymore. But they're going up. The other day, one of the biggest real estate investment banks in America, New York, hit their skids and the government jumped in really quick and covered up. Only people outside, inside the financial world know about it. <laughs> You got these many sources of income, and you think you're safe. Because you hear people talk about sources of income, and you jump to that bad line. Sorry to burst your bubble, but like I said, if you don't have a skill, you got problems. Anyway, wherever you are, peace. Make sure you're having a great day. This is just information, and it should be used for planning. Thank you. Peace.